Hello and welcome to Learning Redstone Part 3. In this one I want to talk about redstone repeaters and comparators, how they work and what they do. So let's get started. First of all a little disclaimer. To make things easier for you I've installed a little resource pack that shows the power levels of the redstone dust directly. That way I don't have to turn on F3 mode all the time and confuse you. You can find this resource pack on vanillatweaks.net. Ok, so far we know that redstone dust is a wire and it can send a signal from a power source up to 15 blocks. But what if we want the signal to go further? That is where the repeater comes into play. When a signal of any strength enters the back of the repeater, he gives out a signal of full 15 out in the front. That way we can transport a redstone signal as far as we want. Repeaters are directional. They have this arrow-like texture to help you out which way they work. The front is where these two tiny redstone torches are close together. When we now power the redstone line in the back of the repeater, he gives out a fresh signal out in the front. But when we give a signal input from the front, it just ends where the repeater is. He completely stops the signal. With repeaters, we can split up a signal like this. When we only use redstone dust, only the top line gets powered. When we now use a repeater down here, both lines get powered. This also works when we place the repeater here in front of the block. But it does not work when we place a repeater in both positions. Another function of the repeater is that it always adds delay to your signal. So if we stack repeaters like this, it takes a little more time to reach the redstone lamp here at the end. You can change the amount of delay by right clicking the repeater. When you do that, the distance between those tiny redstone torches gets bigger, indicating a bigger delay. The repeater has four different settings for this delay. When I set now all my four repeaters to the biggest delay, you notice a good change in time that is needed to turn on the redstone lamp. The final function of a repeater is that it can be locked by another repeater. When a repeater faces into the side of another repeater, he locks the current state of the one it faces into. This gets indicated by this tiny bedrock bar. So even if I turn off the power source here, it still gives a signal out in the front. However, it stops to do so when we now turn off the second repeater to unlock the first one. This also works the other way around. A turned off locked repeater does not give out a signal in front when a signal comes from behind. Repeaters can also help you to get a signal through a block with a setup like this. As you can see here, it won't work without a repeater. This only works when the block you try to send the signal through is a solid block. So this is also the way to find out if a block is a solid block or not. You can have the repeater on either end of the block or if you have too many of them, you can also use them on both sides. Ok, so I already told you that this only works with solid blocks and I mentioned in an earlier episode that glass is not a solid block. So here you see this won't work with glass. Would you know which of these blocks are solid and which are not? In the comments right now, tell me which are solid of these. The slime block is solid. The honey block is not. The leaves are not. The mangrove roots are solid. The chest is not. The cake also is not. And the jack-o'-lantern also is solid. How many did you have correct? Let me know in the comments. With this little quiz done, let's head over to the comparator and see what it can do. Here we have the comparator. It has inputs on the back and both sides and the output goes out in the front. The front is where the single torch is. It also can be right clicked to change to a different mode, indicated by the glow of the single torch in the front. So let's see what it does. The first function of a comparator is his name giving one, it compares. 
It checks if the signal in the back of it is greater or the same as the signal coming from the side. If the signal from the side is stronger, the comparator gives out no signal in the front of it. But if the signal from the side is the same or weaker, in this case 11, it gives out the same signal in the front as it comes in from the back. The second mode, when you right click the comparator, is the subtraction mode. The comparator will now subtract the signal strength from the side from the one coming in in the back. So 14 minus 14 is 0. That means we don't get a signal if both signals are equally strong. When I now change the signal strength on the side so that 13 goes into the comparator, we have 14 in the back minus 13 from the side, giving us an output of 1. Since the comparator gives out the same signal strength in front of it as it gets it from the back, we can, so to speak, save a certain signal strength. For that, we can just chain the comparators like this. Or we can place a redstone dust every other block. And you can also use a setup like this to save resources, since the comparator can send a signal through a solid block just like the repeater. The comparator can also read out a whole lot of different blocks and gives a signal strength depending on, for instance, the fill state of the block. This works for all containers like chests, barrels, hoppers, droppers, dispensers, shulker boxes, furnaces and even the minecart variants of those when these are on a detector rail. We don't get a signal of those blocks when they are empty and a signal of 15 when they are completely full as well as all signal strength in between when the container is just partially filled. This also works for a lectern with a book in it. When you have 15 pages, each page gives out a different signal. This is always depending on the maximum number of pages, so that the first page gives out a signal of 1 and the last page gives out a signal of 15. So here I go to page 6 and we get a signal of 6, since I have 15 pages. On page 7 I get a signal of 7 and so on. The item frame gives out a different signal depending on the rotation of the block in the item frame. This ranges from 1 to 8. Like I said, this also works for the furnace depending on the fill state of it. A curious one is the jukebox. It gives out a different signal strength depending on the disc currently played. The comparator can also read out the brewing stand, cauldrons, composters, cake, bee nests, soul anchors, as well as end portal frames and command blocks. I quickly want to show you a useful contraption with the comparator. With a setup like this, the redstone lamp only turns on when we hit the exact right signal strength. If the signal is too low, it gets subtracted from the output of the chest comparator. If the signal strength is right, only the lower repeater turns on, giving the signal through another comparator to the lamp. But if the signal is even higher, the second repeater turns on and by that subtracting 15 from the back of the third comparator, so we end up having no signal again. The comparator can also read out a block through another block. So here the comparator can read out the chest even though there is a block in between those two. This would not work with an air block in between the chest and the comparator. One very commonly used function of the comparator is to make a signal last longer. For that you just need a setup like this. The signal between these two comparators will now decay over time in steps of two signal strength since there are two redstone dust between them. You can make this even more efficient by simply replacing one of the redstone dusts by a solid block like I did here. Now the signal only decays by one instead of two. You can stack the comparators to make the signal way longer, like I did here. So you can adjust this by adding or removing comparators to fit your needs.
for now, this should be everything. There are a lot more useful things you can do with these components, but we talk about those uses later in the series. In the next episode, I want to show you observers, what they do and what they can be used for. Up until then, I would be very happy if you would give me a like for this video and maybe even consider subscribing if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter to always know what I'm up to next, link in the video description. Until next time, bye bye!